30 near-death experiences, according to Reddit. Number 30. Wife, two-year-old son, and myself went to visit a couple of friends out of the country. Had some food, had a couple of drinks myself, had an amazing time. Wife was sober, and I was wrangling my young one back into his car seat to go home, because he was overtired and unhappy, but made sure he was good and snug. Pulled out of the driveway after waving goodbye to our friends. I came to almost a month and a half later. I could barely move my legs and arms due to neuropathy and fatigue. I had a feeding tube up my nose and a colostomy bag. The doctors told me that I had actually come to a couple of days before while I was still in intensive care, but the nature of the anesthetic they had me on meant I kept kinda waking up, fading back, and forgetting everything. At this point, I was able to remember things normally. They told me right off the bat my son was fine, completely unharmed, and in the care of a very old and dear friend with three kids of his own already. My wife was alive and relatively uninjured, with the exception of some damage to her leg and a moderate brain injury that she would recover from. Slowly. They kept the details about the accident from me for a few weeks while I was recovering, but basically, my wife missed a stop sign in the middle of a dark, poorly marked country road, and we got T-boned by an SUV. Other driver was fine. It's been over two years since the accident. I got the strength back to walk again, but because of pins, bolts, plates in my ankle and shin, I'll never likely be able to run again. The neuropathy in my legs wore off and eventually wore off in my arms to the point where I can use them normally again, but it was a lot of therapy, retraining time. Suffered PTSD about 10 months after by the time I was back home. From time to time, I still have nightmares about something that I don't technically have the ability to remember. Jesus Christ. The top comment to this reads, I hit a tree doing 70 miles per hour about a year and two months ago. I, along with everybody who came across the accident, were shocked at the fact that I was alive. It's been over 14 months and I still hear the loudest boom I've ever heard in my life. The nightmares scare me awake four to six nights a week. Imagine going to war, bro. Imagine going to war. That's only one. Number 29. Woke up in the hospital, sheets covering my body and not remembering how I got there. Once they said I got into an accident, I thought I was driving in my SUV and I kept asking if I hurt anybody else who was with me. Once they said I was in my motorcycle, I then noticed I was covered in sheets and kept asking if all my body parts were attached. Then once they said yes, I kept trying to figure out how it happened and by the time my mom and sis were there and kept asking to see my helmet and stuff, trying to figure out how it happened, kept repeating all the questions many times forgetting I had asked them, had a concussion and torn muscles on my arm and banged up pretty bad. Tough they kept me in the hospital for two days as my heart rate would not go down. Potassium deficiency was the cause. Get a banana in this guy. Memory slowly came back within a few days, didn't loose my memory. God damn, learn the fucking difference, people. Oh, wait, well, you know what? He was in a car accident and got brain damage. It's not his fault, Gael. Jeez. Calm down, Gael. Jeez. Didn't lose my memory, just the events of that day. Still, to this day, I can't recall the actual accident. I just remember being held down on the road by people and me begging them to move as I was burning in oil from my bike. Then the ambulance arriving and paramedics trying to keep me awake. Oh, what happened was that the car in the middle lane decided to go into the corner gas station, crossing the right lane and then turning lane. And I was in the right lane. Hit the back right tire area, running into the car helmet first. Running into the car helmet first and bouncing back on the concrete, cracking my helmet. Yay for helmets, fuck concussions and losing my young guy immortality mind. Well, you never were, man. Number 28. 
I've never told this story before, but when I was 20, I woke up handcuffed to a hospital bed. Oh, this, this is, this is what I'm talking about. The night before I had a reaction to medication I was taking and heavy drinking and started having a very bad panic attack. My friends were scared and called an ambulance, but I don't like hospitals, so that just made things worse. Eventually the cops came and tried to help the paramedics get me into the ambulance. They handcuffed me and carried me out, and in the process, I guess, I turned my head and bit one of the cops on the leg. I remember none of this and just woke up confused and blind because I didn't have my glasses. I eventually was told that I was under arrest for aggravated battery and was going to be taken to the police station after the doctor cleared me. A bite gives you aggravated battery? Jesus Christ. After I got dressed, they cuffed me with ankle cuffs and put me in the back of a paddy wagon. I was booked in the police station and spent the night there until the next morning when they transferred me to the county jail. When I got there, I was terrified, not because of the inmates, but because of the cops. They knew I was there. They knew why I was there. And as soon as I got there, they all started barking at me. Spent the next couple of days being shuffled around, unable to make a phone call to my family and pretty much blind because I didn't have my glasses. When I finally got settled in what was to be my long-term cell, I was told I was being bonded out. That whole experience was strange and scary, but I learned a lot about myself and met a lot of really interesting people. I ended up in court for a year and we were able to get a charge down to a misdemeanor reckless behavior and I had two years of probation. As proof, here's my jail ID. I already know that this nigga's white because otherwise they would have beat the shit out of this guy in uh, in jail. How did I know that he wasn't a black guy? How did I, now, now how did I know that? Oh, he's Latino though. So he's lucky to have gotten away with his fucking life either way. You see what I'm talking about? Man, talk about a, a near death experience, bro. Out of the fucking frying pan and into the fire. You know what I'm talking about? Rather you, you be in some accident and have to go to the hospital than end up in the den of cops that are mad at you because you bit a cop. God forbid. You know what I mean? You know how drunk those pigs get all the fucking time? Or they get belligerent and crazy and they're taking issue with some guy who is clearly under the influence of some kind of drug. Let's not get crazy with this guy. Oh. Number 27. Maybe. Was at a pool. The next thing I know, I wake up in a hospital bed feeling very cold and my throat hurts. Turns out I had actually drowned, but the lifeguard had pulled me out and reanimated me for about 45 minutes. Then I was flown to a hospital by a helicopter where I lay in a coma for two days. Two days, man. I just feel like when you're out like that, there's irreversible damage being done to your fucking brain. It's really bad to be unconscious, let alone, oh god, during which they kept me my body temperature low to prevent cerebral damage caused by lack of oxygen i could go home a week after the incident too too long didn't read man no dude this was a fine this was a fine length you know if if everybody else could take this kind of fucking hint well at least they're not making shit up on some kind of no sleep and let's not meet bullshit tier but you know the the thread's only just begun so i'm sure we're gonna get there kyle calm the shit down and keep reading the thread um, got stabbed about eight times by a bunch of people who I thought were my friends. Some nonsense about betraying the Night Watch. Now this is a joke, I can tell. But... Is it a movie that I should have seen? Who the hell are these people? It was directed by Tamara Beckman. Is it a movie? Look, man. Let's look at the comments here. Oh yeah, I heard about that. A few of them still hang out, apparently. Fuck Ollie. Very funny, man. This is what happens when we don't slap a serious on the threads. So forgive me, sub subscribers, I don't know. Mind is kind of boring, driving my car, and bam, suddenly everything is in slow motion. Then I'm in the ICU naked, and so high on morphine, saw the light and everything. Apparently, another car driving 70 miles per hour T-boned me. Lucky to be alive. This stuff terrifies me. I'm confident in my own ability to drive. It's the other people I worry about. And that's where you should be worried. Everybody listening to this, half the time, it's not going to be you that's going to be getting into an accident. Is somebody going to be getting into an accident and dragging you into it with you? All you got to do is try to be very careful, wary, 
and uh, cautious of other motherfuckers on the road. Because the crazy thing is, typically, um, it's going to be some drunk asshole. And often, he's going to be fine. It's you who are going to be fucked. So watch yourselves, man. Not me, but my girlfriend's sister jumped out a window Tuesday morning. She's schizophrenic, so there's other issues and besides just trying to kill herself. She is still sedated and hasn't woken up. Broken vertebrae in the neck and lower back. Oh, but they don't think she's paralyzed. Slight bleeding on the brain that they're relatively sure didn't cause damage. Busted rims, torn up lung. And they had to remove part of it yesterday in surgery. Some other broken bones, etc. They have her sedated, unconscious to prevent her moving due to the broken vertebrae. Hmm. I wonder if she'll be disappointed when she wakes up later in the week. You know, that it wasn't successful. On the plus side, her parents are having a Cambodian guy come in to do an exorcism. Oh, God. So that's going to fix everything. <laughs> Jeez. Love her, but her parents are something else. Old school Vietnamese. Are you going to be there for the exorcism? If so, please share that story. I hope she has a speedy recovery and finds good treatment um, plan for her issues. It's funny that he tacked this on to the end to not seem like some douche just totally invested in the sensation of it all. It's just like, hey, um, if you're going to be there for that exorcism, can you please like re record it um, maybe for, you know, because I want, I want her to get better. I'm a doctor. I'm actually a doctor. <laughs> I just want to. This isn't a funny thread, Kyle. Are you trying to get the jokes in here on the Waka Waka bullshit? Read the next one. Woke up in the hospital. Too weak to press a PC. Why, why are you doing this? <laughs> Woke up in the hospital. Too weak to press a PCA pump. Being told I'd been in a catastrophic motorcycle accident. Had suffered extensive injuries to my entire, except my left arm, spine, and head. Thank the universe body and had been in a medically induced coma for five weeks. They forced him into a coma. Scary shit. I lost any memory of the event or the week prior to it. I was hit by some unrepentant douchebaggers who were out on parole, repeat offenders, and decided it would be a good idea to assault a 7-Eleven clerk, rob the store, and lead the police in a 30-minute chase at excess speeds of up to 100 plus miles per hour. Their joyride ended with when they went the wrong way on the freeway and took my on-ramp going 70 miles per hour against traffic and slammed into me at a net speed of 120 miles per hour. I was going 50. Jesus Christ, this boy shouldn't be alive on a motorcycle. We all know... We know all this from the police report. I never had a chance since the on-ramp sloped up and then back down to enter the freeway and I hit these guys at the crest of the hill, never saw them. The impact sliced through their engine block so they ran on foot after that. The police recorded their statements after being followed by helicopter and being apprehended as what you were arresting me for. Damn, son. These motherfuckers, these dirty gingerbread pieces of nigga bitches. What you arresting me for? Let's hope that they were fucking drunk on that didn't do nothing shit what the fuck they got nine and five years in a plea deal they tried to put me away for 60 on my first offense what you're slamming into that's not vehicular manslaughter i don't know what's going on uh, okay look 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 they got nine and five years in a plea deal and I was notified when they were each let out after serving less than half the sentence. Please note, they were 100% sober, sober, knew that they hit me, and they left me to die. I'm a generally compassionate person, or at least I try to be, but I hope their lives are a living hell and that they live a long time. I... Uh... I hope they never get the chance to hurt someone again, but I fully expect that's what they've done. For my mental health, I'll never try to find out what's become of them. This was over 10 years ago, and I have a good life now. Loving girlfriend, a mortgage, a super smart border collie, everything I ever wanted. Although it's been a serious struggle. Man, I'm living that struggle, and the struggle never gonna end, baby. The struggle will get real until the day I die. Struggling until the day I die. When's it going to get better unless I start hustling? You know what I mean? 
or stepping on the backs of people to get up to the top like the CEO of some douchebag company that's essentially stealing money from people and putting people out of house and home, you know what I mean? Oh God, I just don't have the, the heart to be cruel enough to make that money. So I'll be here forever. And I didn't get any money except for 50000 from the Victims of Violent Crimes Fund, remarkably. Um, their money and my hospital recovery time to get my MBA and have worked hard as hell to move into my new, I had to change since I'm not very agile anymore, career. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for this guy. I'm still severely and permanently disabled. I'll never run again nor have any real balance, need a cane, and lost use of my dominant arm. But I'm lucky, since I still have my faculties and look relatively normal. He's, he's pleased about his appearance, this poor guy. You know what I mean? He's walking with a cane, dude. Uh, hopefully he just has a, a good life, man. This, this nigga was robbed, nigga. This nigga was robbed of his life. Fuck me, you'll never catch me on a motorcycle. You'll never catch me on a motorcycle. I don't own a motorcycle anymore and will never attempt to ride again. You need 100% of your physical faculties as well as a mental, as well as mental to do it safely. I don't blame my motorcycle at all. I miss riding and probably wouldn't have fared much better at those speeds in a car. You damn right. One going 50 and the other going 120. Jesus Christ. If you ride and are reading this, please make sure you buy a safety vest gear and wear it at all time. I am only here today because I did. He was wearing a vest. Let that be a, a little bit of... Let that be something that the, the people who ride motorcycles listen to and fucking heed the, the warning of. And no amount of skill would have saved me from being um, in the exact wrong place at the exact wrong time. That's just how life works. I was wearing a Nolan flip face helmet, $300 at the time. Thank you, Nolan, for your outstanding quality and commitment to safety. I still have that helmet and it scratched and cracked all the way through. That could have been my skull. That is what's up. It's getting pretty metal in this thread. Didn't expect something so good today, did you? You're probably going to sleep, though. But if you're not going to sleep, hope you're having a good day. Woke up in the hospital with my roommate and her mom asleep in the chairs in the hospital room. I started freaking out because I was seven months pregnant and my pregnant belly was obviously not pregnant. My screaming woke them up. My fiance and I had been hit by a drunk driver killing my fiance. I lost the baby. I had been in a coma for three days. I have some really gnarly scars that my kids like to make up crazy stories about. My favorite being the time I fought off three knife-wielding psychotic carnies and murdered them with my bare hands. A cute little ending to a scary and unfortunate story. But hey, man, at least she can have kids. I know some women who essentially just want to kill themselves because they don't possess the capacity to bear children. And in their minds, it makes them less of a woman. And it's sad because we live in a world where a lot of men, you know, I, I don't care who this triggers. So leave a comment if you're transgender and you're, you're mad at me about listening to this. A lot of men decide that they just want to be a woman. You know what I mean? And I, I have no problem with what you would like to identify as. But as far as I'm concerned, what you were born with anatomically, no matter how you squeeze that inside out or do whatever you want to do as far as chopping it off it's not going to make it so that you can just make a damn baby you see what i'm saying um and they get through life living it fine and totally you know under the impression that ugh, they are a woman and they're satisfied and they're confident you know what i mean but some of these women who simply they just they are a woman you know what i mean through and through a hundred percent it's just not being able to have a baby makes them like want to throw themselves off a cliff and it's so sad and I, I don't know, you. there's no way that you can really bring some of these people back from that. You know what I mean? There's no sympathizing with that. There's no there's no empathizing with that. Um, not in a capacity that's going to make them any better. So if you're listening to this and you can't have children, Jesus Christ, it doesn't make you any less of a woman. It doesn't make you any less of a person. Jesus Christ. It's just, you know, it's sad that like some people have the option and don't take it. And they don't have the option and they'd kill for it. A response to this says, I gather the stories you like to make up with your kids. 
that you have time to heal, but I can't imagine that was a quick or easy process for you. Is it still painful to talk about how old were you, were you at the time? I was 23, she says. It was long enough ago where I feel okay talking about it. Sometimes a scent will trigger a memory of him and I'll get the sads for a while. He was a really special person. I haven't met anyone else like him. Killing my fiance and I lost the baby. Let's get through this, guys. I was running half a marathon with a friend, and we had just passed the 10-mile mark, and I felt like I was getting into the groove after I struggled a bit with the previous few miles. Don't tell me that you run in a damn marathon and some motherfucker hit you with a car. Woke up the next day in the ICU with my family all around me. Heat stroke. Oh, damn. And rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis? Abdomyolysis. Google, help me the fuck out here. It's been a while. Um, just gonna throw pronunci pronunciation. All right, here we go. Abdomyolysis. Abdomyolysis. Why can't I hear this? Rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis. Well, I wouldn't have pronounced it right because it's too, it's too wise in there. Not the damn. Not the eyes. Rhabdomyolysis. Heat stroke and rhabdomyolysis. I was admitted with a temperature of 108.6 and they were telling my family to prepare for the worst. Had to stay in the hospital for a few days, then take it easy for a few months, but otherwise came out unscathed. Don't recommend it. Uh, I apologize if it sounds like I'm reading a news report tonight at 10. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, trying to like angle my voice in a way where I'm projecting at the fucking microphone. But, um, it would actually just be easier if I... God, that's, that's gonna sound gross to somebody. But hey, you should be sleeping, because apparently that's what everybody does when they listen to these fucking videos. Hilariously. A response reads, I'm running coach, and you'd be surprised how many runners who fall ill with heat stroke um, mention finally feeling smooth or relaxed or in the groove right before they collapse. Sometimes they even stop sweating, say they feel better, then hit the pavement. Good thing I always feel like I'm on the verge of death when I run. I guess I'm safe. That would be me if I ran. And I need to do some running. And I feel like if I had somebody to Pokemon Go with, maybe I would Pokemon get my ass the fuck up out my house. And uh, That game's amazing, though. I'm level 21. How you guys feel about that? How you guys feel about Kyle being level 21? Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go, baby. I Pokemon got no good Pokemon. I hopped into the back of my mate's pickup truck after a rugby game, went to sleep and woke up in the ICU tr in traction with no feeling from my waist down. Turns out we had a head-on collision with a driver and I went through the back of the cab picking up a host of broken body parts including four compressed vertebrae. A year and a number of surgeries later I walked out of the hospital an inch shorter with enough metal in me to set off metal detectors at airports. I was the lucky one. The other three guys in the truck never woke up afterwards. 20 years and it still gets me. Edit. I kinda expected this post to disappear into the jumble of the Stred history and at best attract some half-assed shit comments or maybe some YouTube douchebag who's gonna read it for his channel. You're freaking awesome, Reddit. Thanks for the love. The accident happened in, Zim in Zimbabwe, where I grew up. I traveled a fair bit since then, but I'm now a bony feed kiwi. Dude, I'm. S I, this is. I. This is why I stay indoors. It's not gonna protect me. You know what I mean? A drunk motherfucker could come barreling through the fucking house right now, and and I could be wrapped underneath the car. But man, this is some scary stuff. I didn't find out about the others for a while, aside from being zonked on pain meds. I don't think I was capable of understanding what happened. Visitation was restricted to the in the ICU. My mouth is getting a little cottony and I'm like reaching my hand, but the damn drink's out of the fucking range of my... Aside from being... Oh, you read that already. Visitation was restricted in the ICU to my folks, but the day after I was moved out, most of the two senior teams and some staff pitched up to tell me the nasty truth. The tiny ward was crammed with big, burly, ugly bastards crying their hearts out, and I loved every one of them for it. Not sure where I was going with this, but I've ended up here. 
Here's a thought from an old guy with a fucked up body who walks with a constant limp, has tried every legal and many non-legal relief options for the daily thrum of pain, who has had two decades of survivor guilt and who knows firsthand the debris that is left behind when someone is tragically and unceremoniously yanked from their life, their family, and their friends. If you are not 100% in control, don't put the key in the ignition. Don't put yourself in harm's way and don't risk fucking up someone else's life. If only every fucking drunk person could hear that, dude. It's not going to change their dirty, disgusting fucking ways when they go out like a piece of fucking bitch and get themselves under under the influence of something and get inebriated to the point where they don't have full control of their functions, physical or mental, and don't have the wherewithal to pull off normal shit to pull off basic tasks and they're getting behind the the, the fucking wheel of a, a a vehicle son a ton vehicle to throw other people's lives into fucking jeopardy you know what i mean i'm the monster though weed's bad do you get what i'm saying when niggas get drunk and they drive drunk and the fucking and the fucking it's a slap on the wrist if you get caught doing that let's go to a class if you get caught doing this shit but let them catch you with some weed it's the end of the fucking world Fuck this gay earth. Call a cab, take a bus, walk, but for Christ's sake, don't drive. Man, I, I just want the thread to be over, you know? I want to I, I want to do metal, dark, creepy, even scary lists. But when it gets me pissed, when it gets me riled, and when it has me losing faith in humanity in the sick world... Where people are trying to live action hero lives and fuck the people, you know, fuck the extras in their life. They're the main character. Yo, these other people that you encounter on a daily basis are the stars of their own story. And you are possibly making their story sadder. What are you doing? Drunk drivers are probably my number one source of rage in the world. Tell me about it, brother. Oh, yeah, brother. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Someone's watching this video right now and just woke up like, Word Macho Man Red. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our number one source of rage. Oh, yeah. The cream of the crop. Look that up. Look up uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. I wasn't talking to you, Kyle, but they're not going to do it, Randy, Randy Savage, Cream. They're, they're not going to look it up if you don't. The, the Cream. Oh, yeah. Russell, Media 3 at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. It's a day that I'm certain my guest at this time. About all the way to the top, yeah. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in. But The Cream. But the, the career will you rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's enough. Jesus Christ. You're in the middle of something here. Don't forget, sometimes drunk drivers don't walk away from crashes. Fuck them. I work with a guy whose daughter killed herself in a car crash two years ago. She was super wasted. Her friends hid her keys on her so she couldn't drive, but she found them and proceeded to call her father and let him know that she was on her way home. Friends, how the fuck y'all gonna hide keys in a way that a drunk motherfucker can find them? You get what I'm saying? Like, take these keys. Put these keys in between these cities. You know what I'm talking about? Don't hide in the keys in a way. Don't hide in the keys in a way that the girl can find them is the problem. So... Let's continue here. An hour later, the state trooper were, were, were at the door. When he went to go identify the body, his brother went with him. And his brother had to go and identify the body because he couldn't just do it. Apparently, his brother had short-term PTSD from what he saw. And the only way to identify the body was by a tattoo on her ankle. Don't get me wrong, I'm in no way condoning the behavior. If I ever drive after having a beer, I wait until I am completely fine before getting into the vehicle, if I get buzzed. The reason I say this is to help encourage people not to drive when they are drunk. If you're intoxicated, it isn't worth it to risk someone else's life. This is something that people will say when put under a spotlight, but is really how you feel. Is this really what you're going to do? I remember this one Family Guy episode where it was like, well, how else am I going to get my car home? And that's the way that's the way people look at it. That's the bottom line, unfortunately. It's pretty rude, but that's the way that it works. Dashing through the snow on a pair of broken skis or the fields we go crashing into trees. The snow is turning red. I think I might be dead. 
I woke up in the hospital with stitches in my head. I was teaching an organic chemistry lab in grad school. Student asked a question, so I turned around to answer and woke up in the hospital later that day. Student had poured fuming HCL in the wrong beaker, and it was giving off a weird gas, so he pulled it out and the fume hood to ask me what was wrong and stuck it directly in my face. I don't know what he put in it but it was apparently something pretty da bad if he woke up in the hospital. Did you fail the student? <laughs> did he get sued? Did he respond to this? Because it doesn't look like he did. The closure we're looking for will never be here. Taking sulfa antibiotics for a severe infection after two others didn't work. The infection in my thigh seemed to finally be receding. Day six, I started feeling tired, so tired, just needed to sleep a little bit. Go to the bathroom and go to pee and realize that my vagina is completely dried out. I look up at the mirror and I'm completely red, covered in hives and my eyes are dried out and blood is coming out of a crack in my eye. They feel like sandpaper. It hurts so much. And my mouth and nose completely dried out. I, I can't swallow. But I'm so tired. I don't leave the bathroom. And I woke up in the ER, covered in bandages and filled with the aludid. And that's the second time I developed Steven Johnson's from an allergic reaction slash sensitivity. My skin is still discolored all over my legs, brown patches under my fingers and toes. This was last month. I spent a night there, got dosed with steroids, and I'm still exhausted and have to grease up to prevent my vag from falling apart. The ER doctor told me that the symptoms were mild and I was lucky. Edit, I'm honestly surprised no one has asked for pictures. I did actually take some. Um, pictures the morning, I ended up in the hospital to send to a nurse friend. One of the pictures had some pretty sad and depressing boobage in it and I consider these not safe for work. This was day six. We are not going to go through too many of these. Obviously, discretion is advised. Just a little bit of the, oh, oh, oh boy. Let's, let's just, the link is in the description. Be brave, gentlemen. Be brave. A suicide attempt. I was really not expecting to survive. I had done my homework and my mother had enough of the right combination of painkillers to stop the heart of a small elephant. And then I woke up. Everything was hazy and I had a catheter, but I don't really remember anything until I got to the mental hospital. That was five years ago. Hmm. She's better now. I was at a party with a friend in some college town. The street we were on had trees, um, had these three-story apartments built side by side. The whole street was partying, even on the roofs. And we got separated and it was time to go. Anyway, I see an ambulance going down the street and knew it was for my dumbass roommate, so I followed the ambulance and sure enough, he was laying on the ground barely conscious. He tried to jump from one building to the next and didn't even come close. Luckily for him, his head broke his fall. A few weeks later, he finally asked, Oh yeah, hey man, that night we went to Lawrence and I woke up in the hospital, what happened? <laughs> His head broke the fall. I'm amazed he didn't die. Falling on your head often doesn't work well. Well, if he was pretty thick to begin with. 18-year-old me got super wasted on Smirnoff watermelon vodka at some little club in Clearwater, Florida. Apparently, I fell off of a tall bar stool and busted my head. When I woke up, I wasn't even sure what state I was in. I accidentally called my friend's mom in North Dakota, trying to get a ride somewhere other than the hospital. A decade later, and I still can't drink anything with watermelon flavor. Well, at least it taught you a lesson. I'm pretty sure watermelon vodka, uh, Clearwater, Florida, could have summed that up. That's rude. That's rude. Why, why everybody being rude? Being rude to Florida. Where am I? Hospital. You were airlifted here. Family's in the next room. You had a car crash. Give it to me straight, Doc. How disfigured am I? <laughs> 
well you're not you're not disfigured you're, you're messed up but you still have all your parts family comes in doctor leaves doctor won't tell me how fucked up am i paralyzed lost a leg neither don't bullshit me i can't feel my legs you have an epidural and you've been out of your skull on morphine for the past x days how could you tell i just woke up you've always been conscious high as a kite but conscious oh okay nap time and then i sleep and wake up and the next doctor checks in where am i repeat for nine days and i finally started to retain memories mm -mm -mm. i wonder if he ever had a bit of fun during the time you couldn't remember anything like i'm sorry to tell you this but <laughs> you're now just ahead in the jar my favorite you're just ahead story since Blank is home and doing well, I will share yet another reason I will spend eternity in hell. After her surgery and recovery, she began to wake up in the room. She was covered in a blanket up to her neck, and as her eyes barely fluttered open and she saw me standing over her caressing her cheek, I said, Baby, something went wrong and they had to remove your entire body. You're just ahead now. She softly cried no and went back to sleep. Sorry, baby, I love you. But these opportunities don't come up very often. I had to do it. <laughs> what was this like when she was pregnant? That's rude. That's pretty rude. Diabetic. Went to sleep normally. Woke up two days later in the hospital. I hot too low. <laughs> I I got too low while sleeping. I got I got so low while sleeping that I passed out. Fortunately, the time I passed was close to the time I'm supposed to wake up. My brother found me half dead and took me to the hospital. Man, diabetics have come a little close to death, man. That's pretty creepy. I worry this will happen to me when I get too low. It always wakes me up. But nurses have told me that warning will eventually wear off and I won't notice being low. Creepy. That's one nice thing about CGMs. I'm guessing that this is some manner of device to keep you aware of how how uh, low or high your blood sugar is. I had the worst low I've ever had a couple of weeks ago. I woke up at 4 a.m. feeling drowsy, but weak as well. My pump was being like my pump was beeping like crazy, and in a stupor, I was in somehow managed to look at it, comprehend what threshold suspend meant, and tested my blood sugar. I think I was around 30 mg slash dl, which we can assume for the sake of this is, is low. Usually when I get dangerously low, I can still make my way to the kitchen and get something. I was so out of it, I couldn't even muster the energy or willpower to call out to a family member, much less make it down to the other end of the house. I seriously think the only thing that kept me from having a really bad night was that I left my tester right next to my bed and I had a full bottle of glucose tablets in it. As you should. As you should. You should have this kind of crap stationed in the area where you sleep so that worse comes to worse. You wake up in the middle of the night. You can pop one of these damn pills or eat a friggin' candy bar so you don't freaking die. I mean, but that's just me. I was riding my young horse and training to jump. We rode up to our first three-foot jump. He stopped, so I started preparing to turn him around and try again he then reared up and hurled himself over the jump i was completely unprepared for him to jump and i fell off at the apex of the jump that's all i remembered from that day apparently i took his saddle off hosed him down and drove myself home next thing i remember i was being wheeled in for a cat scan i broke my back and this was discovered uh, this wasn't discovered until much later since i was still mobile and fractured my skull my helmet was in three pieces. I still own this horse. He's 22 now and we still ride. Just no jumping since people are demanding pictures. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, she's cute. That horse looks like he knows what he did though. <laughs> horse knows what he did. Woke up in the hospital, summer 2002, cuffed to a hospital bed. This makes two of these stories now. Tubes all over me and stitches all over my chest. 
The night before I was hit by a drunk driver, had a six inch gash down the center of my chest exposing a few ribs. After I was discharged, I spoke with the gas station attendant who told me that he denied the driver a beer sale because he was already wasted. The asshole was never found and that was pretty bad, but apparently I woke up in a daze a few hours later. Doctor had me sedated and my arm secured to the bed because I was trying to pull my catheter out. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. There's a there's a Reddit called R Pillows that people go to to kind of calm down after intensities on Reddit. What is this? Two guys, six hundred pillows. Just when I think that there couldn't possibly be a dumber subreddit, you know, Reddit strikes again. I was 12 in 1982, do the math. Woke up in a hospital, bad, bed, feeling fine. No idea what happened, nobody else in the room. Last person I remember hanging out with was my friend Scott, so I called his house. His mom answered, advised me to call my parents, no answer at the home phone. So I'm sitting in, his, in this bed, trying to figure out why I'm even there. I finally discovered that the rolling table over the bed opens up and there's a mirror under the lid. Across my forehead and down the whole right side of my face are fresh abrasions. Oh, that's why. Finally get a hold of Scott and learn the story, which I still don't remember. Was riding a bike down a sidewalk near grade school. Sidewalk takes a 45 degree left turn and I cut the corner. Grass is deep and a little wet, and my front wheel catches on the edge of the sidewalk, flicking me over, and I landed on my face, dragged against the other edge of the sidewalk, and was knocked out cold. Another neighborhood kid was in the area, hustled back to alert my parents, and my dad took me to the hospital in his car, and I woke up the next day. Yes, my parents left me in the hospital by myself. Oh. Your parents went home to bang. Come on, Reddit. It's cool if one doesn't make it, we can make a new one. Warranties up anyway, I think. This is Reddit, ladies and gentlemen. What is happening here? What is happening here? Um, I just like that the kid who found the other kid was smart enough to not try and like carry the kid or move the person because that's what you don't want to do right there. Happened when I was in kindergarten. Apparently, I fell down the stairs after I stepped on my own trousers. Dude, this sounds like a, a story for Stripes. She does this kind of stuff all the time. Hopefully, she doesn't wake up in a hospital because of it. If this were in cartoons, you'd still be okay. Generally, an injury in a cartoon would result in instant, hosp instant hospitalization or death. Having a bowling ball fall on your head, that's internal bleeding of the brain. Or how about a piano falling on you, you know what I mean? And then, like, you open your mouth and you've got, like, the piano keys for teeth. Hmm? Is this the kind of gag you guys are, are in the mood for? Was knocked out by a flying squirrel while biking, bike riding near my house. Everybody wishes they could see it, though. Source of username detected. This guy's username is Do You Like My Nuts? And he was knocked out by a flying squirrel while he was riding a bike. Watch this. You're going to love my nuts. Does anybody know that from the Slap Chop? Um, no. Type Slap Chop remix into the internet. I was watching Voyager on TV. Ooh, Star Trek, Star Trek Voyager. Next thing I know, I was in a hospital bed. Turns out I'd gotten up too fast, lack of blood flow to the head, and passed out, hitting my head on the floor hard. I'm 6'6 and fractured my skull. Confusing. I was watching Voyager on TV. Next thing I know, I was in the hospital bed. No um, no ne explanation needed. Did no one say, uh, please state the nature of your medical emergency? Probably watch the two Vix episode. That's a really stupid episode, man. Let's not talk about it. Um, for those who don't watch Star Trek, uh, there's this one episode where, you know, you know, the beam me up, Scotty. Even if you don't know Star Trek, you know, through osmosis. Uh, you know that they beam and kind of teleport around there's an episode where two characters from this particular iteration of star trek beam down to a planet and they try to beam back up to the ship but something went haywire with the tele the transporter and now they're one person <laughs> the whole episode is just them ugh, like 
trying to adjust to their life as one dude. It is so bad. It is so bad. Luckily, he didn't watch Threshold, the Warp 10 episode. He would have died. Look, man. Seven of Nine always made my blood rush to other places, too. You guys are just... You guys need to stop. You guys need to stop. Star Trek, that's my jam, though. Does it count if I woke up in a hospital surprised with the results? I went in for a stomach operation, woke up, and said, Oh, uh, it doesn't hurt that bad. My surgeon, mother, anesthesiologist, and two other nurses all looked us super awkward and said, Well, we didn't do the surgery. You had an allergic reaction to one of the drugs given to you in the anesthetic process and flatlined. We spent 40 minutes trying to stabilize you. I was absolutely in awe. I felt fine until I started to get clammy. Then my blood pressure went to 40 over 20, and I passed out. Spent four days in the ICU and a week total in the hospital. Them bills must have kicked your ass, homie. Them bills must have kicked your ass. Yikes. Had you not had anesthesia prior to that? What a terrifying experience. Allergies to anesthetics have got to be the worst. Does that mean that in the future you can't have surgery? Somebody says, it actually turned, he said, he responds, it actually turned out that it was an antibiotic that they used while putting me under, which I'd taken before to fight off a cystic face slash scalp. That was so bad, I actually had to leave school for six months. However, my reaction was odd. My airways didn't swell. I didn't break out in any sort of rash. The only thing that happened was my blood pressure dropped and I flatlined. The guy who tested me for everything used in the operation, the needle mark covered my arm. The Just to say how drugs are used in the process said I'd be very surprised if you reacted to any of these. And I want you to get an echo, a cardiogram. A cardiogram. Echocardiogram. Echocardiogram. God damn it. So on February 14th, I got the wonderful experience of a guy hammering an ultrasound thingy into my poor boob just to say, yep, that's a good heart. After the allergy doctor, proper name escapes me, already deduced the antibiotic I reacted to. It was very strange. I don't remember a lot of it, but it took me about a month to finally go, holy shit. I could have died. Well, you know, it's better to be in shock than to let that kind of crap unravel you before you're out of the uh, out of the fire, so to speak. Hospitals are where people die. I didn't die in a motorcycle accident. It was a pleasant surprise. He woke up in the hospital. Somebody says, me neither. Was heading to a friend's birthday party. Something happened on the way there. I'm still not sure what. Eyewitness accounts vary. I high-sided and then slid about 30 feet on my face. Thank God for a full face helmet. Still don't have any recollection of the 24 hours or so from before I left my house. Ended up with a bad concussion and some decent road rash. About six months later, I met a guy who left his vehicle to help me. I met the guy. Turned out to be a good friend of my sister's husband. Did you give that guy a hug? Actually, I made him a pecan pie. Excuse me while I go save your life then. Shoves off motorcycle. Saved your life, now give me pie. It takes six months to get your pie. <laughs> this is this is enough Reddit for today, man. Are we done here? We got one, two, and three left. You can do it, Kyle. Cut a guy off while bartending in college. Cut a guy off. Okay. He wasn't too happy, grabbed a bottle, and chucked it at the back of my head as I turned around. Oh, he verbally cut him off? That's that's ridiculous. Woke up in the hospital bed and my best with my best regular and his wife ensuring me I'd be okay and the guy wouldn't be a problem. Super reassuring, other than the fact that this was a pretty unsavory biker bar and the regulars, though amazingly kind and loyal to me, weren't the most savory human beings. 38 stitches, a partially shaved head, and three days later, I was um, at lunch with the same regulars. So let's talk here. Um, the biker regular said that this guy wouldn't be a problem. Let's hope that, you know, that means that they killed him. You know what I'm talking about? So let's get into the comments. Okay, so what did they do to the bottle chucker? 
you bottle chucker? I never asked. I got the feeling I didn't really want to know. They weren't the permanent solution type, or so it seemed, but I never saw the guy again, and they seemed damn sure I wouldn't have to worry, so who knows? We want to know, damn it. Come on now. <sighs> Look, man. The, number two. My brother and I were outside playing with squirt guns. This was 2001, so I would have been 11. If I had a squirt gun, I'd be outside playing with it right now. I guess I do have a variation of a squirt gun, but if I were outside playing with it, I'd be slapped for uh, indecent exposure. Um, is that what they call that? Is that what they call that? Indecent exposure? Is that a phrase that I just made up? Indecent exposure? Yeah, that's the name of it when you're... Uh, the crime of intentionally showing one's sexual organs in public. That's the joke, guys. I o um fucking guy. Next thing I know, it's Easter Sunday. I was in the hospital bed and a massive headache and blurred vision, and the last thing I remembered was four days ago. Apparently I fell backwards and smacked my dome on the curb hard enough to fracture my skull and bruise my brain. Got two weeks off school, which was cool back then, and I'd had to wear glasses ever since. According to my mom, Apparently, the first sign of concussion consciousness in the hospital was me getting out of bed, taking a piss on the floor, and then going back to sleep for two more days. The whole thing was a weird experience. Well, there you go. Oh, he's getting up. What's he doing? Did he just start pissing on the floor? Yep, that's piss on the floor. What's he doing now? Back to bed? Wow. He hit his head and turned into a college freshman. Or a 37-year-old drunk idiot wife was not happy. She was even less happy after she slapped my bare ass and yelled, I'm I'm camping, bitch. What? Two of my good friends rented out a summer camp in the early fall for the weekend to have their wedding. There were these beautiful Anirondack cabins that had opened up to the river that ran along on the border of the camp. Our friends were also kinda kind enough to supply an open bar for the weekend. An open bar, wow. After the wedding on Saturday, we proceeded to get all insanely wasted. Um, we are all whiskey hounds on the best of days at a wedding with an open bar and no worries about the noise. Things got reckless and worry-free. The morning after, one friend, we'll call him Rick, <laughs> Rick, 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 where's Morty, has this deep look of shame on his face that he, that doesn't talk to anyone and just sits in the corner of the mess hall, head buried into his plain oatmeal and coffee. About 20 minutes later, his best friend's wife, let's say she's Stacy, comes in and sits down, glances awkwardly at Rick and proceeds to find her oatmeal and coffee equally appealing. Everyone is talking about how shitty drunk we all were the night before. Stories of vomiting and passing out in the grass of a parade field are being told. Rick and the friend's wife are quiet until someone asks Stacy how her night was. She says it was fine, but she's a bit hungover. It later comes out that during the night, Rick got up to pee. Thought he was peeing out of the back of the cabin, but was in fact peeing all over Stacy and her husband. This is not the first time Rick has accidentally peed on someone while drunk. Some part of me hopes it's not the last. What a story. And that last line. What a story. I think he knew what he was doing. It's funnier that way to me. Number one. Walking down the road one night, proper side of road in the reflective gear. Headed to the gas station from Mount Mountain Dew. <laughs> and smokes oh headed to the gas station for some mountain dew and smokes i thought there was an actual mountain dew suddenly it's two days later and i'm strapped to a hospital bed apparently i was hit by a mitsubishi 3000 gt kid driving was coming from a rave high as a kite and thought i was an angel in my reflective gear he tried to catch me with his bumper fun times Ooh, an angel it would take it would look great on my bumper did he go to jail please say yes the first thing i thought when i heard that was the scene in bioshock when you get your first plasma come on now this angel looks like it's dancing bioshock references guys we should talk about no man's sky and how i want to get no man's sky but i don't know if i should get no man's sky for the ps4 because i'm not sure but i'd play it and it seems pretty uh it seems pretty serene and gentle it seems like great streaming uh 
content or I'm just like shooting through space and landing on planets and discovering weird creatures and stuff like this. I hope you guys have had a good day. Um, if you're asleep, then hey, I guess this video did the uh, trick. And if not, then you know what? I've done like a billion of these videos. You could just go listen to another one and go to sleep. As a matter of fact, start listening to all my videos while you go to sleep. Just make a get a playlist of these things, right? And then just run it nonstop. You know what I mean? Even while you sleep, let the videos run while you sleep. Ooh, this is what I'm gonna say at the end of every video. And maybe someday I'll make seven whole dollars off of these videos. Love you. And I'll catch you later. Man, happy Pokemon going. Mm, Pokemon.